So, good afternoon to one and all. Thank you to the Island Council for allowing us to share our knowledge with you. And congratulations for this conference. Mm, it's been a huge success. I have way too many slides in my presentation. I don't know how far I'm going to get. So, I'm going to talk about the present situation. Uh, a few ideas on what's going on, a few legal definitions, uh, disposal treatments as established by law, whether the requirements for landfill as established by law, mm, treatment, disposal, animal products, but for example, reject from uh, industry is not considered in the same category. And then a few uh, of my personal opinions, if I get that far. So, what's happened in recent years? Various different laws have been introduced, Spanish legislation, uh, directives, framework directives on waste management in 2011, 22 stroke 2011 on contaminated soil. We have the packaging rule 1999, and then the uh, EPCC, basically, this is the most global law affecting one and all working in the, this industry. So now we need to establish some objectives, some goals here. First of all, disposal in landfill. Mm. Then we need to look at biomass. How do we calculate exactly what biomass is? When we calculate the overall amounts, we do have to have clear definitions because not everybody uses the same definitions or even the same figures. So we don't know exactly where we are. Or well, some people know better but are not letting on. And then finally, we have the 2020 goals, which is basically uh, around the corner. So here we go. Again, figures. This is European Union for solid urban waste, Spain, Europe is getting better, Spain is slight behind our goals. This is for 2012, we were perhaps not performing as well as we should have been. We were below the European average. Obviously, we're looking ahead at the leading the bunch. Mm. We have our waste management laws. We haven't gone into these into great detail, but we've had a snapshot of them. And obviously, waste management laws uh, basically have improved figures. If we hadn't had these, if we hadn't had biostabilization process, if we didn't have established methods and processes, then perhaps we wouldn't be performing as well as we are now, uh, poorly as that is. So what happened between 2001 and 2010 in terms of waste management in different countries here? We have a snapshot of various different countries. Some countries committed to different models. Uh, arrows showing trends. United Kingdom started from a very poor base. Mm, they still are throwing too much into uh, landfills. Uh, 2001 blue, to, uh, 2010 is green, so you can see uh, how it has reduced, but it's still far too much over the average. The United Kingdom has made a firm commitment, but by 2010 they're still not meeting their targets, even though they have reduced their amounts. Obviously they were chucking loads into landfills in the first place. Italy? Mm, we've seen growth trends. Germany? Quite clear trends. Spain? I see no clear trends. I don't know if you can see any improvements. Well, perhaps, yeah, recycling is improved, but this is not actually reducing landfill. Same image that we've already seen, the same graph. Obviously, the order is slightly different because disposal and then composting and recycling and incineration, okay, we're not doing too badly, we're below 50% as a global figure. Germany is obviously not doing much better. And now we have a graph that not many people show this. This is the comparative when we look at generation per inhabitant of urban waste. Key data for 2014, here we are in Spain. From 2004 to 2014, this is the advances that we've made in waste production per capita between 2004-2014. This is something that we don't necessarily talk about that much. So I think 
that we're doing pretty well, probably because of the crisis more than any specific prevention policies. And between 2004 and 2014, I think that we have made a lot of progress if we compare to Germany. We have brought down the amount of urban solid waste per capita much more than Germany has done in these 10 years. So I think mm, this is a pretty indicative graph from Eurostat. France, mm, reduced waste slightly, Italy slightly, and then perhaps, oops, excuse me, perhaps the most striking result is that of Greece. Greece had a terrible crisis between France and Italy, and it has not brought down its waste production. Now, how do we define disposal in our law? Well, any kind of operation which is not recovery. Well, uh, and when the operation has secondary consequences, uh, other than the use of substances in energy. So what is recovery? Any operation whose main result uh, is that the waste has a useful end, that it can substitute other materials. So we have disposal and recovery, and perhaps disposal, the, the definition itself doesn't uh, cover too many areas. And then we have bio-waste. This is biodegradable waste. And then we have compost. That's the legal definition. Compost is biostabilized material. Mm, we still have plants making compost, uh, but they're not necessarily legislated strictly. Mm, but essentially what we need is sorting. What we need is sorting. We have biostabilization processes, but we need to look for other treatments so that we can, therefore, put everything in the right category and that we can achieve the objectives in the correct way because we need to recover. Recovery is the most important objective. Uh, otherwise, we're going to end up disposing everything. So we need to look at recovery more than disposal. So, this uh, disposal operations. This is what we see as stipulated by law, the different definitions. Mm. But at the end of the day, we focus on controlled deposits. But we also have definition number eight, biological treatment, non-specific. Um, this is something that we all need to take into account, biological treatment. And if we have the biological treatment, then we have the biostabilization process. And if 8 or 6% is of the waste comes from the, the what was thrown away altogether, then this perhaps can fit into a different definition. We also have number 10, which is incineration on land. So we have the legal definitions. We need to look at sorting, but we need to make sure our priorities are clearly defined from the very beginning. So um, what about legislation? We have legal prescriptions that come from the EC Directive 95, 1995. Mm, there was a, a draft bill at this time and then Basically, this directive was transposed into national law, so this means that for the last 20 years we have been applying all the stipulations of the 95 directive. And then we had the 1999 directive on waste, and both the Spanish Royal Decree 1481 slash 2001. So 2001 was when we finally approved uh, the contents of this directive. There are various different annexes in the Royal Decree on uh, technical requirements on how we should deal with our waste. I'm not going to talk about that in any detail, but one of the most important general requirements for me is disposal in cells. These need, this waste needs to be contained in cells to reduce impact as much as possible. Uh, you can see uh, the image at the bottom, it's a scheme of waste disposal. Basically, this is the waste disposal system we have, although we're moving towards zero waste. 
these are different processes, all the different elements involved in the process. And then we have requirements such as location, control of wastewater and leachate, protection of soil and water, gas monitoring control, both gases that we use and the gases that we seal away and the energy use made thereof. And then we have uh, disturbance and risk, we have stability and finally the closing off of the waste uh, landfills. Now, here in Tenerife, we seem to have jumped from 1985 to the present day, but there's been a lot more there. I participated in a project in 1997, for example. Uh, we heard, well, we talked about the black box in this specific case. And in fact, before the waste directive, we began to look at treatment processes for the waste that was being generated on the island. This is in 1997, so we changed the concept of what a landfill is simply because we're running out of space in that specific landfill. So this is why we have the cell sorting. It's Arico was a landfill, but now we are now separating by and putting this waste into cells. So Arico is not as it was in 1985. There has been a certain evolution alongside the Island Council, and we've worked with them to help them with technical assessments so that at that time we managed to come up with a very in innovative approach, a new project, which I think that was the basis for all future, future developments. Now here we can see the old landfill. These are the cells, cell two, cell three. And well, two and three are actually in construction. This is a picture of Arico in the south. And then we can see how we've improved the landfill. This is 4.1, the cells. This is under construction, one that's been sealed. Uh, and basically this is how a landfill now has to be dealt with. This is the future of landfills. We can see now completely sealed in cell number four. So this is what we need to be doing when we treat our waste. And then obviously we also need to look at the future. We need to have much more efficient sorting. Everybody needs to participate in the whole process. Everybody. Um, then a few uh, brief images. So what do we do at Aubasser? Well, I'm sure you've all heard of us. Basically, we have a turnover of 1.5 billion. We had in 2014, we have 300 facilities, more than 29 million tons treated every year. We had 28,000 employees, and our quota of national is 35 percent of national waste. We also work worldwide, all over the world. So that's why you've probably mostly heard of us. But if you want to find this out, just take a look at our website. Mm, but what you might not find on the website are our um, commitments to research and development. We have a specific innovation strand. This is something that we've set up over the last few years and focused on specifically. We're developing 23 different projects. We have a, a budget of 5 million euros a year. Some people might think it's a lot or not so much. If we depend it to our overall turnover, it's only 0.7%, so perhaps it's not quite enough. But we are beginning to invest more and more. We have different urban waste treatment projects, client-based projects. Basically, we want to improve things for our clients. We want to show them what we've got, and we can want to work alongside them. We also serve public administration, and we also serve people. We are here to serve the citizens. That's basically what we do. We have built the Alfonso Malillo R plus D center. We have a, an ideas platform where people can uh, brainstorm. We have different R&D projects. We sometimes take a closer look at R&D projects. Sometimes we um, Mm, overlook them completely because they're not going to be much use. But we are simply looking to improve the way that we manage our waste because we cannot rest on our laurels. We need to make progress. We must also highlight CSR because this is a key plank of our company strategy. It's cross-cutting and it affects the entire company in all its various different departments. So we have 
basic uh, CSR principles. It needs to be cross-cutting. We must comply with the law. We need transparency. We need to have correct competence. Uh, of course, the EU uh, supports this, and our company has signed many different agreements. We uh, respect World Heritage Sites of the UN, and so on and so forth, many different areas. And then finally, uh, above and beyond R and D, we have quality standards, energy efficiency standards. We have R and D certification, UN is one six six double two, and we also calculate our carbon footprint, which is a key uh, tool. Uh, that's the UNE certification too, and we comply with that. So um, to draw conclusions. Basically, we need to meet our 2020 goals and we need to continue to be more sustainable in a global way. We need to consider every type of possibility so that we can choose the best path to follow. Obviously, we need to have a global approach, as we've heard. And we, as a business, we contribute the best way we can. We have uh, uh, historical and geographical expertise. We have many different capacities. Uh, safety guarantees and commitment both to society and environment. Of course, a commitment to innovation because we want to be a benchmark of excellence for the future. Thank you very much.